our esteemed uh, faculty members from BMS and my colleagues, <coughs> erstwhile colleagues from ISRO and also AJ, we are partners and Dhruva Space people, both Nekanti and uh, Prasad and my dear young friends and the faculty members and students from other institutions who are participating here. But this is a formal inaugural thing, so I will be very brief about two, two or three things I will tell. That when the 1957 you know, was the international uh, geophysical year was being celebrated by, you know, as part of the UN program. So the, uh, doing the space research, outer space research was part of that uh, effort. So 1957 and many countries started doing it. So until then, the objects which were going were mostly the missile development, both the, you know, the USR at that time and the US, they were competing to develop the ballistic missiles for short range, intermediate range, and also the intercontinental range, ICBMs. So the USR converted the one of the ICBMs into an orbital mission. That is how Sputnik was launched in 1957 October. So the space age began at that time, you know, October 4th. And subsequently, the animal flights, man flights, you know, variety of things started coming. But that is the romantic part of the space program, you know, what I would say. You know, when you are daring to do things, even against great odds, and the government support was there in many places. India joined at that time in 1963. I think we had the system coming into existence under the Department of Atomic Energy. It was uh, a tail end of Atomic Energy program in those days, very small money. And Physical Research Laboratory at Ahmedabad was given the responsibility of organizing it. So it was called INCOSPAR, Indian National Committee for Outer Space Research. So there is a COSPAR, Committee for Outer Space Research internationally. This is the Indian National Committee, which was headed by Dr. Sarabhai, who was also a member of the Atomic Energy Commission at that time. So we were, I was one of the few who joined at that time. You know, the appointment order said that it is, uh, the, I was appointed as Control and Guidance Systems Engineer in a permanently temporary organization. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is what I would do, because I could have crossed Atlantic like many others, but I was attracted to join, and then, you know, 17 people at that time, we started working at uh, the old church building in Rwanda, Tuba, the fishing village, and then today we have more than 17,000 people in, uh, inside this world. Uh, many more, maybe close to 17,000 or 25,000 people in Indian industries, 500 and odd industries. I think that Sri Ramurthy was instrumental as part of Antrix to develop the industry network in those days, whether it is for launch vehicle or for the satellites and all that. But I would like to just say only one thing, that the initiative which India took was, you know, that Sarabhai, the first SYNCOM satellite, many of you might have heard that in the, you know, textbooks are there, Oscar, many other things are there, but the SYNCOM satellite was the first geostationary mission built by Hughes Aircraft Company, Dr. Harald Rosen, who was honored by Draper Prize later on. He was having a unique idea, you know, the, we have all the Arthur Clarke's, you know, prediction of having the geostationary orbit satellites for communication, covering continents. But the giving shape to that idea came from Harald Rosen, who was a young engineer in Hughes Aircraft Company, and he was almost like a Vijay Malya, you know, the Hughes himself. No, a multi-dimensional person, okay, I don't want to explain too much. <laughs> <laughs> he was a philanthropist also at one end, so use medical systems and all. But the thing was, this man didn't get support inside the company for that idea. So they were in missiles, many other things. So he took the model, you know, a small model of that markup, satellite markup to Paris, and the Eiffel Tower, he put it there, 
Then he said, you know, uh, I need help. That is how, you know, he got visibility worldwide for that idea. And Americans woke up and finally it was funded and all that it carried was one telephone communication between Tokyo to US. I think the Tokyo Olympics was around that time, you know, likely to come. So then Singham too followed. It is the simplest configuration and, you know, it is a spinning drum and then magnetic torques and some propulsion system and uh, this one antenna. So these were the very simple things in the beginning. So that was the beginning of all the coming. But when the satellite was being done and all that, 1963-64 itself, Dr. Sarabhai found that the space communication is going to come. And we need hundreds and thousands of operators for air stations. So he went to UNDP with the begging ball, no? because India is known for things, taking aid from international bodies. So he went with a proper proposal, so got the ESCAS, air station for training the satellite communication operators at Andhava for not only in India, other countries also. So we have an international program coming even ahead of the satellite working in space. So this is what I think, you know, the foresight of Sarabhai to bring the space program to India, not only in India, international level. That is one thing. Second is the, when I was selected to join that one hour interview, 14 members and all, no? that is a very long story, but uh, all the top guns of atomic energy and you know, those days, they were all there. And then finally Dr. Sarabhai said, okay, you go out and wait for five minutes. So I was called in, we have taken you, so you go and take your lunch and come back. <laughs> so afternoon there was a project meeting. What it was, we were told in four years, you know, 65, 1969, India will launch its own satellite on its own launch vehicle from Indian soil. That, you know, the vision which both Baba and Sarabhai had at that time did not materialize. It took another 12 years more to put our own satellite with the Indian soil and Indian built launcher, SLV-3, Dr. Kalam was the project director. Of course, the first communication satellite he had returned in 1979 in the DCAD profile. That became operational you know, through Apple in 1981. So we were very closely matching the original vision, except in the launch vehicle we got one decade delay. You know, that was the only thing which we had to say. And in the GSLV 1972 we made the plan and it is now only realized, you know, as a workable indigenous system which will be used again and again for many, many missions. So this is what I would like to say. So it is highly interdisciplinary organization. There is nothing like, you know, one department. It is not like a university department. I think you have to say you are competing in one department. But here you are contributing as a team, in the interdisciplinary team. And when something doesn't work, there is no fault finding. The problem is solved. I think that is the solution which we have come up with. We learn from failures and succeed again and again. So many times we have put the, you know, our things, valuable things in Bay of Bengal, you know, <laughs> as our, in front of the whole nation. Because the TV was, unfortunately, television is now widespread. <laughs> so immediately, the earlier otherwise only the you know, BBC, you have to listen to the radio. Then only you will know. But here now everything is transparent and open and your challenge you have to meet. And now the pending demands for the transponders in this country is close to 500 plus estimated earlier. Today it is 700 plus. And we have only one fourth of that capacity, close to 180 transponders of our own satellites. The rest is all borrowed from others. They are all parked over the Indian Ocean region in this area, visible region for India. The other thing, in remote sensing, we have done in 1971, we did the first unique experiment, you must have read all those things in the brief <coughs> history of ISRO, that coconut will disease, you know, a helicopter born, Kodak camera system with false color infrared film, and then you just fly over the camera.